Hi guys, Hatch Comic again today. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far with Rostermania continuing in the background. The Black Ops 6 beta is now well underway, but lots of drama going on last night with a number of professional players, not least Shotzi himself, getting banned from the beta for basically being too good. Shotzi drops a nuke, the next game he gets banned, while actual cheaters still run around the game blatantly cheating. What is going on with this? What is it going to be for the rest of the year if they still can't get on top of these major issues? Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy subscribe if you're new as always this is scum by the way absolutely farming here on scud and it's interesting to see i think how the meta of this game evolves because when jetpacks first came out it took a few months for people to really figure out okay what is the most optimal way to use the movement and you'll see some players play and they'll obviously use the movement but um you know like scum does here with the sliding but it's not necessarily the be all and the end all of their you know the way they're getting kills they're still setting up on head glitches they're still playing playing in that way and that's probably still optimal in some respect you know some people are just sliding all over the shop for the sake of it maybe i'm somewhat guilty of that and it can obviously cost you at times as well so that's going to be interesting to see there's also been some debate on what the best gun is right now from the smg side it's pretty clear with the jackal generally ruling that class but the xm4 with some attachments on it gets pretty good i mean this is an attachment set that beans put together here parasite though reckons that the ak is actually the way to go fat idiot and then you know they have a bit of a back and forth so you know there's obviously some debate on that whether it's an ar game whether it's an smg game i don't think it's incredibly unbalanced right now of course you know the jackal with the four shot kill is relatively fast but at the same time it's not like it has a crazy fast fire rate so there is that there's some other positive things as well the fact that for example in search and destroy it's going to be final kill cam whereas other game modes is going to be best play that's always a nice feature i think what most people are hoping for is more maps like like skyline like skyline is good and it's fun and um you know if i could play it 24 7 i think it'd be the way to go to be honest don't really massively like the other ones so i think people are hoping that more maps like that arriving into the game and as slasher says for a beta it's fun to run around and use the new movement always the potential is there just need good maps and spawns the spawns in the game also definitely not ideal but it's always like that in the alpha beta build it is what it is whether treyarch can design their own spawn system that's a question because there's been some talk that the squad spawn system is effectively baked into the game engine by infinity war that they now use and there's not too much you can do about it so but even then the funny thing is that squad spawns nowadays actually get a better rep than it did before back in mw19 everyone hated squad spawns nowadays the spawns have been kind of questionable the last couple of years in hard points that at least squad spawns were kind of predictable right and maybe we're going to go back to that this year hopefully not like a good solid spawn spawn system like in let's say black ops 2 i'm not going to mention the game that i was going to mention even though i will at the end of the video don't worry about that and um you know that would be fine but whether they can execute it is another question the game still doesn't like feel what it used to be in my opinion but um maybe i'm just getting old to be honest now yesterday we saw this and well, this guy is obviously absolutely fried, right? God, I think we need to get this guy in the league because, wow, he's absolutely cooking, tucking these guys into bed. Super impressive stuff, I'm not going to lie. And, um, you know, Jimbo's long-lost cousin, it seems. So he's on the game, playing no problem at all. And as Pristini understandably says, serious question, why do these guys do this? What do they get from it? Is it like some sort of dopamine or something, as the COD kids say nowadays? Like, what's going on here? But obviously the funny thing is that this guy's getting away with this on some level whereas some of the pro players are seemingly not now before we get to that couple of roster things ghosty look ghosty is actually one of the best um you know betas when it comes down to impression farming and stuff on the top like he just drops this unbelievable yesterday but you do have to wonder whether thieves are considering making a move we talked about it yesterday envoy apparently having conversations with thieves and Look, we apparently heard Envoy having conversations with Thieves and with Cloud9. Now, I think both organizations would be wise, as would Envoy, to have those conversations. But of course, if you're Cloud9 having that convo, you are at least contemplating replacing Kismet. If you are Los Angeles Thieves having that convo, you are at least contemplating replacing one of your SMGs. As we talked about, Ghosty, I mean... In an ideal world for Thieves, you're talking maybe Ghosty, Sib, Envoy, and then, you know, maybe Joe Deceives or something. Maybe even like Envoy and Kleenex if you could, you know, fork up the cash to make that happen. That'd be pretty insane because 
I, I mean, Ghosty and Sid would be nasty. I feel like, you know, replacing nasty, unfortunately. Although I like nasty, like, I don't mind if they keep them. I think that'd be fine. But um, it is possible to upgrade if Sib is available. Obviously, Scrap is also potentially available. So there's that to consider too. And on the SMG side, Joe Deceives definitely turned up at the end of the year and I think should be a staple piece of that team going forwards. But at the same time, you can argue that if you're bringing an Envoy, is there enough firepower with Envoy and Joe Deceives? you know maybe that's a question to be answered but anyway I don't know what's going on behind the scenes over there obviously and even Beans is in the replies I thought it was just a little bit interesting because you know maybe there's a world where they consider Beans for nasty or something like maybe in terms of firepower that upgrades you a little bit but obviously at the same time for Thieves you don't want to disrupt team chemistry for no reason like they came fourth at champs and second at the world cup like they obviously have the talent there and they have the chemistry. If you're just going to blow it up for kind of like the sake of it to make a marginal upgrade, that's probably not going to be worth it. If you can make a substantial upgrade, then it is going to be worth the risk, I would say. Especially if, for example, Cloud9 would be looking to get even better. There's also a big story over the last couple of days though as well emerging at Optic because Eric, who I was, um, you know, had the pleasure to meet, who was running a lot of the stuff behind the scenes for the event that they put on in Texas, he's been let go from Optic and also ESA, right? So Esports Stadium Arlington. The key point here really being that Optic had their own production team that they have used to run the event at Esports Stadium Arlington over the last couple of years and of course run at the World Championship in Dallas, Texas. Now, he was not the only one. So wishing Eric the best in the future. But, um, you know, we see here from CJ, today's my last day of working with Optic and Envy. He's been there for seven years. I mean, um, you know, video editor, motion graphic designer he has in his bio, worked with Hastro and um, obviously everyone at the team and there's other guys as well that have been let go from various entities within the organization. Now this, to be honest, I don't think should come as a massive surprise. Unfortunately, this is the reality of esports as it stands, that it's very challenging to make it work in, you know, with the amount of staff that some of these organizations have. And maybe this is, you know, the better way to do it in the long term. Of course, people are going to say, oh, well, you know, Maniac and Bose are still getting a paycheck for a couple of the podcast and then these guys are getting laid off. But like, that's how the organization is going. It's a difficult one in the sense that when Optic merged with Envy, I think there was a feeling that, okay, the money problems or whatever was happening there are not going to be a concern anymore, right? Like, they'll have had, you know, got past that. But at the end of the day, Envy were also propped up on some level by a load of VC money. They, of course, have shut down the headquarters in the heart of downtown Dallas. They're moving back to their headquarters in Frisco, I imagine, in part because they didn't need the space and it's cheaper. And also for Optic, it's just an interesting time as an organization because, like, obviously, in many ways, they're killing it. And with Scump, they're killing it with the esports awards and everything happening there and obviously the watch party and they ran a killer event at the world championship and they of course won it with their call of duty team but they're not really in other esports apart from halo their of course valorant application a couple of years ago didn't eventually get through although they thought it would do and now that's obviously a bit of a problem as well so yeah i'm not exactly sure where optic go from here on some level like how do they grow from here as an organization again maybe content it's not like their content isn't what it used to be, but it's more like the meta for content and what people will watch and be interested in is, is obviously changed in the last like you know seven eight years. So just interesting, as Jake Cal says, one source told me that it's mainly talent. So you know players and stuff like that, I suppose, upper management and also, you know, for the podcast and all this, upper management and some production staff that remain with the company. So apparently, you know, lots of optic stuff getting laid off over the last few hours. In the long term, probably going to be necessary for the organization, but I'm um, still unfortunate. It does, of course, raise questions that if optic are struggling with things like this, then it's certainly the case for other teams as well. But let's talk about some of these problems, because in the beta, a number of professional players have been getting this message, this ban effectively, as a Beans is here on stream error, you've been temporarily banned from playing on the servers. And it seems this is because maybe the players get reported and then for whatever reason, it just adds up to a result like this because Shotzi just had a ridiculous game, completely, you know, went 31 and 0, got a nuke basically, and then immediately gets this in the next lobby screen. Yeah, they gotta get you KA out and put kills in. <laughs> I gotta get warm, bro. I'm Fuck. just... I'm just here, like, I'm just... Here's existing, huh? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm getting to know the map a little bit. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. 
Did you get a new? Oh, let's go. No. Let's go, eh? Oh bro, my the... god. You just dropped a silent nuke? Bro, why did it never be me, bro? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you, bro. We have a lot of work to do, bro. No. Oh, what the fuck? Let's go, eh? <laughs> oh. Let's go, eh? Oh, oh, bro. <laughs> Wait, that was crazy. Wait, is that the w fastest nuke? Bro, I did not die once. In a TDM match, it's true. Silent nuke. <laughs> 31.0 is fucking insane. Bro, that's nasty. You know what? You know what? Because he got a new call. It's like, we gotta be gotta... on. Underpaid what? players that have potential pickets decline uh, based on banned salary? Or banned. I'm not banned. Hey guys, are, banned. We, are we about to lose? Bro, just lock in. Lock in. Yeah, we are banned. You got banned too, right? What? <laughs> you got banned? Wait, when I got a new, uh, when I got a new, they reported me. Wait, wait, you got banned? Yeah, we, there's no what? fucking way, brother. We both got banned. I got you. I got you guys. I got you guys. The same is true here for Krim as well. He makes his return to competitive play, which I thought was pretty cool to see. Not to competitive, you know what I mean, right? He downloaded the beta. He's playing the game with the boys, and um, <laughs> you know, very quickly gets banned from playing on the servers. So um, it's just one of these problems, and it's not necessarily massively going to affect the competitive scene this year but it will affect ranked play probably this is just the frustration right because we want to have a good ranked mode to help people get into the competitive scene and this year ranked is coming out earlier than ever but the anti-cheat doesn't work on two levels it doesn't actually catch the the actual cheaters that are doing it and there seems to be loads of false positives where people who i don't know if it's just they talk trash they get reported by some of the guys on the other team or they're just really good and people think they're cheating right because you know obviously Krim, the most successful Call of Duty player of all time for a very good reason, all of a sudden they're getting affected, not even shadow bans, right? Just straight up bans from the game as it stands. So yeah, I don't know what they're planning to do about this. If anything, it is obviously a problem in the beta right now, but it's cool to see that most people are having a pretty good time. And I think we are in for a good year. As long as the maps are good, it's going to be a good year. I think the players with the way the movement works will have their complaints about you know, what they feel like is kind of ridiculous way. I'm sure there's going to be certain spots on certain maps where there becomes like a meta movement, right? Or people are consistently diving around a certain corner to chal a certain head glitch or whatever. And, you know, maybe some people are going to complain about it. And maybe to play, it's going to get a little bit crazy. I think to watch, though, as long as the maps are good, this year to watch should be pretty spectacular. And, of course, the questions we raised on Rostermania a few minutes ago make that kind of well known. A couple of things to close out the video with on the side of phase this was pretty interesting though i thought so this is a clip from shotzi way back in 2017 on halo and simp in the replies is like wow this guy's built different now of course fast forward a few years shotzi's now in call of duty competing against simp you know beating him to at least this year's world championship but then again let's not forget that shotzi was in the conversation to join phase with simp obviously a couple of years ago but then skump decided not to retire as he was going to run it back and then shotzi stayed on the organization also as i promised i'd mentioned for you guys earlier shout out draza by the way for putting together and streaming some black ops 3 channels over the last couple of days i was playing the black ops 6 beta i was watching the the Black Ops 6 stuff and I was like you know what let me go and watch a proper game all right look Black Ops 6 is pretty good there ain't no Black Ops 3 and it's been cool to see because instead of playing the beta and grinding the beta Draz has been up late night playing I mean like today I was up at what 7 8 a.m my time and I turned on Draz's stream and yeah there he was playing Redwood Search playing Stronghold Search this of course is Infection Search and they're putting together some four versus four chals still playing Black Ops 3 so cool that they're keeping the game alive and all i wished was that in hindsight the black ops 3 season had more not exactly competitive support because it had competitive support but the season structure wasn't the best because it was changing a lot going into the cwl for that year this year we are still in the cdl but i think there's no doubt the season structure may change significantly so what i don't want is that um, a promising game in black ops 6 to get potentially ruined by not having as many events as arguably it deserves but very much interested your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comments comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.